Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to show you two really simple but really useful pandas methods. So let's load up pandas, import pandas as pd. And now I'm going to look at oil prices. Oil prices, I think it's called the West Texas Index. So I'm going to say here file name equals WTI daily. This is the daily price of oil from somewhere in West Texas. If you know more about oil prices, tell me about it in the comments. Anyway, I want to create a data frame based on this. So I'm going to say df equals pd read csv of file name. And if I just look at this, at this data frame I get, we can see that it has two columns. The first column is the date, and the second column is the price. Makes sense if we are looking at daily oil prices. Fantastic. But I want to make some changes here. I first of all want to say parse dates equals date so that we see it as a date time value and not as a string value. It's not really going to be that important here, but it just drives me crazy not to do that. And then I'm going to say here index call equals date, and that's just going to make the date into our index column. And there we go. So now we have a data frame with one column. So you could almost call it a series, even though it's not. A data frame with one column here, price, and the index is the dates. So far, so good. So if I want to know, right, what were the 10 most recent oil prices, I can say df, and then I can just say tail of 10. And we see the 10 final prices there. Um, and we see here 2023, 918, so September 18th, it's a little bit out of date, but okay, I can deal with that. Fine. But here's the thing. What were the 10 most recent differences in oil prices from the previous day. That is to say, I'm not interested in finding out that on September 18th, it was 91.47. On September 15th, it was 90.83. I'm interested in finding out how much to go up or down relative to the previous day. This is a really useful kind of calculation to do, right? If you're looking at sales for your organization, if you're looking at income for your organization, if you're looking at expenses, basically a huge number of calculations that organizations do are looking at reports and saying, well, how much did things change? Did they change for the better or change for the worse? Well, I can say here, df.diff. And df.diff is a method, of course, and there is a version for series as well. So if I said df of price of diff, df diff, and that returns a new data frame with exactly the same index as before. But now look, the values represent how much did things go up or down from the previous value. So if we look here, 9147, the previous day was 9083. So there it went up by, let's call it about 50 or so. And the previous day went from 13 to 83, so it went up by 0.7. And sure enough, we can see here that this went up by 0.7, this went up by 0.64, showing I cannot do <laughs> arithmetic uh, on the fly here. And this is a fantastic tool. But wait a second, you might be thinking, what if, what happens about the first row, right? The first row relative to what? And that's why we get NAN here in the first row. We were calculating relative to that first row, so that first row gets NAN. There's no way around that more or less. So diff is a fantastic way to do this. Now let's say I don't want to compare each value with the previous one. Rather, I want to compare with, let's call it uh, seven uh, day, well, let's even call it like five days ago. Meaning I want to compare it with one week before since we're only going to be doing uh, um, you know, business days here, or I assume so at least. I haven't really checked that carefully. So how can I do that? Well, if I say df.diff, of periods equals five. Now it's going to show the first five rows are NAN and the last five rows, well, this is quite a different number. Where's that coming from? Well, if I say here df of lock of, let's just do df tail of 15. Let's take a look at that. So basically, I'm not trying to calculate 9147 minus 9083. That's what we did before, where we were calculating versus one before. I want to go five before. So it's one, two, three, four, five, 8730. 8730. And that is 417. Look at that, 417. I'll do one more of these in case you're impressed by my calculation abilities. 9083 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8751. 8751. And we get 3.3. 319, and here we have 3.32. It's rounded off there, and so on and so forth. By the way, if you're a little freaked out that we get these wacky numbers here, that's the way floats are. That's for a different video, but floats uh, are kind of crazy, and you really should be rounding them or truncating them or something. So if you want to find out the difference 
between a value and the previous one, just use diff. You want to do the difference between a value and a particular number of values before it, you can say periods equals and specify that number. This is really great, by the way. For example, I've done calculations of inflation, and inflation is typically calculated year to year. So if you are looking at the November inflation numbers, you don't want to do a diff with one before, you want to do a diff of 12 before, so you'll be comparing November of this year versus November of the previous year. Okay, so periods equals very helpful. Well, this is all great, but what if I don't want to know by how much it changed? I want to know by what percentage it changed. Hmm, well, I could calculate that, right? That doesn't seem like such hard math, but why should I work hard? I can say df dot pct change and here we go once again nan is going to be in the first row there and now each one is going to show me by what percentage things changed so here from september 15th to september 18th it went up by 0.007 percent right not a huge change but something and so on and so on and so forth um by the way you can also say percent change you say df percent change periods equals five and then it'll do the same thing as before, but instead of giving us uh, you know, percentage row by row, it'll give us percentage do that skipping. I have found both diff and percent change to be incredibly useful in all sorts of reports, and I'm guessing that you will too, and now you know how to use them. Hope this was interesting. Please don't forget to subscribe because I got lots more Python and Pandas content coming. Let me know what you think, give me feedback in the comments, and I'll be back soon with lots more videos about Python and Pandas.